Okay, this is the third video in our Scratch the Maze game series, and in this one we're going to look at improving and extending our game. And to do that, we're going to add a new level. We're going to replace the sprite in the new level, so the player continues to play, but the character changes. We're going to use if statements and loop um, within the game to produce a gravity effect, and we're going to add some objects the sprite can climb. At the end of this, you won't have a finished game. You'll have to go away and develop it further yourself, but we'll have given you some tools which will hopefully allow you to make quite an interesting program. Okay, so if we look at where we got up to with the game last time, the only difference really is I've moved the bear a little bit lower. If I press go, I navigate my crocodile around. If he touches the wall, he gets sent back to the start, we get a message. If he goes up and touches the apple, the apple disappears and the score increases by one. So we should be able to increase our score a little bit further. three apples, three points. If he touches the bear, then we lose a life and we get sent back. If we pull him onto the bear three times, just to speed this up a little bit, and pulling him onto the red, which is why that's not changing, the lives goes to zero. Because the lives is now less than one, the characters disappear, and the game is set to um, be over. Basically, it's showing us a new screen. And that's fine. The problem here is that there's no progression. Even if I get to the end here, I'm just a crocodile at the end of a, a loop. There's no well done or completion screen, nor is there an extra level, which is the thing we're going to have a look at doing now. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want something to mark the end of this level. So I'm just going to use a sprite for that. It doesn't really matter which sprite, it's just an object you're going to touch, but I quite like the bat. So I'm going to use the bat. Now he's a bit big, so we're going to reduce him down and take him to about 50, I think. And place him in position there. Now, as with all the other characters, we want this bat to be visible when this starts. That's in the look section. So he's going to be showing. We want him to be invisible when we go on to the end screen. Game over. So we're going to set that as hidden. We want him to be in the position he's in at the moment, so we want him to be within the look, motion blocks again, sorry. Uh, set that, go to X and Y position, so if I move him now and press the green button, he should be back there. Now, the bat has actually got a couple of different costumes here, so one of the things we could do is we could actually get the bat to move while he's there. So one of the ways to do that would be to use a loop. We go back into our control blocks and we put a forever loop under here. And we can just choose these two costumes. We've got A and B, which are probably the best two for this one. So we're going to put in looks, switch costume, and switch costume, and change one of those to A and B. I don't want it to happen too quickly. So what I'm going to do, because if you press now, it's probably... Yeah, it's probably just flat happening too fast, so we can't really see the difference. So I'm going to put a delay between. So now it should go a bit slower. And it could be one second, or we could reduce that if you want to be a little bit faster. We could be like 0.5 seconds. So it's changing every half a second. So now, if we drive the crocodile around to here, still nothing happens because we haven't programmed anything into the bat. So what we want to happen now is we want it to take us to the next level. So to do that, we're going to go to the backdrops going to click on choose a backdrop. I'm actually going to choose an existing backdrop this time because I want to make a gravity effect. So it would be quite good if there's a kind of naturey background behind it. So let's see what we can see that we can use in the background this time. I'm going to use the jungle one. It might take a second to appear here so we'll just bear with that a second. There we go. And I want my jungle to be um, platform game. So I'm going to go to the blocks. I'm going to go to a fill block. It would be helpful if it was a colour that wasn't on the page. Which could cause us some problems because there's quite a few colours on here. But let's just try and choose a quite brightish kind of green. I don't think there's a bright green on there. We'll give it some ground here. And then we're going to give it a platform here. And a second platform up here. Okay. You could spend more time and make these a little bit more carefully, but that will give me the basis of it. 
I'm going to call this level 2 so I know where I'm going to. And then if I click back on the crocodile code, what I'm going to say this time is that we want a new forever loop. So when the game starts, forever, I'm going to use an if and then, so if statement, so if it's touching. And this time, if it's touching the bat, then what we want to happen is we want to change to the next level. So we're going to go back into the looks. I'm going to set the uh, backdrop to level 2. So if we press on the green button now, the crocodile navigates all the way around to the bat. As soon as he touches the bat, we get taken to level 2. But there's a few things I want to happen when that happens. To start with, I want the crocodile to hide. So we're going to put in a new event. So when backdrop switches to level Two, we want the crocodile to now be hidden. I also want the apple to be hidden, so let's pull that onto the apple. And I want the other apple to be hidden, just in case we've managed to get past one without collecting it. And I want the bear to be hidden. And I want the bat to be hidden. Okay, so if I now press on the green button again and I pull onto the uh, bat this time, the bat should now be hidden. Looks like he didn't copy that one. Let's just try that again. Okay, it's showing that time. So if we press play this time and check that. Good. So we've now got a clean slate to work on. We now want a character to appear at this point. So I'm going to actually use Scratch the Cat on this one. Just because we've already had a go at creating one. So I'm going to type in Cat. I'm going to use Scratch. I'm going to pull Scratch down to the start here, and I'm going to reduce Scratch's size significantly, not as significantly as that, 50%. Okay. As on the previous levels, I want Scratch to be hidden, because we're not going to be on, Scratch isn't going to be in the beginning of the game, so Scratch is hidden on the first level. We want Scratch to appear when Scratch comes onto this level, so we're going to say... When the level switches to level 2, we want Scratch to show. So we're going to go into Looks and we're going to add in a show there. We're also going to set Scratch's position, so we want Scratch to go to this position. And while we're here, we might as well also sort out the um, end of game one. So when, Scratch, when the game switches to let the game over, we want Scratch to be hidden as well. Now at the moment Scratch won't move, so we need to sort that out as well. So let's go on to the costumes. Let's rename this as Cat Right. Right click on Cat Right and duplicate it. Let's flip Scratch around and call that Cat Left. So we've now got a right cat and a left cat. We want it to start, well it doesn't really matter which one's over those it starts with, so we'll just leave the um, Costume, I suppose it's slightly better with the costume on right, so let's switch to cat right. Okay, now we can copy the controls from Mr. Crocodile, so let's go back to Mr. Crocodile for the up, left, right, and down controls. Go back to the cat, and we'll probably have to pull those around a bit. So we've got down, right, left. And up. And we'll need to change those costumes now. So it's cat left and cat right. Now, if we press on the right, the cat can go right. If we go left, the cat can go left. If we press up, the cat can fly. And that's where it gets a bit weird. We don't really want that. So what we want to happen now is we want the cat to be able to be affected by gravity. And to do that is actually pretty simple. We're basically just going to create a new loop, but again we need it to start off, so we're going to say when the backdrop switches to level 2, then we're going to have a forever loop. This one we're going to use a repeat until, because we want um, Scratch to be affected by gravity, but not when he's on a level. So we're going to say repeat until it hits a particular baseline. So we're going to say repeat until, in this case, Scratch is touching the colour. I'm going to use the colour picker 
to pick out this one. Now the problem with using the colour picker is, or using the colour sensing one, is that if there's any green in the background, Scratch will also stop on that. So there are other ways of doing this, including taking Scratch's start position, putting him exactly on the marker here, and then setting it until the um, Y position is less than minus 133 three or 134. But I wanted to try and work on all three levels, so we're going to try and use the touching colour option here. So forever repeat until it's touching colour. What we want to do is we want to ch use the motion and we want to change the Y position because Y is up and down. And because down, we can see here, he's at minus 28, he's at 81. When we take him up, the Y changes, so we want the Y to change downwards. So we're going to go to motion, and on motion we're going to go to change Y. And I'm going to start with minus 2 here. Now what that should mean is if I pull Scratch up into the air, let's just try and see this if it works. If I try and pull Scratch up into the air, Scratch now starts to drop down. And if I press on the up arrow, you can kind of get Scratch to fly if you hit it very, 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 very quickly. But it's not easy. So if I'm not happy with that, I could change that to minus 3 and it'll fall faster. It makes it very difficult for him to get to the next platform, which is good. But we need to deal with that in a different way. We need to be there needs to be a way for him to get there. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add another sprite. And the sprite I'm going to use this time is going to be the snake. A bit like a snake's in a ladder's game. But this snake's not the right way around, so I'm going to go onto the costumes. I'm going to highlight the whole of the snake so I don't grab just one part of his body and rotate him around so he's facing upwards. Could actually use the other costume, but this will work fine. I can shrink him down and do it there, so I'm going to take it down to like 60%. Pull that snake to where I want him. It's a bit strange, but work. You can actually look at things like vines on the internet, find a PNG one and download that and import that, and that would work just as well. Okay, so we've got a snake here. Again, as in the previous ones, we need to take that uh, snake so he's not visible at the start. So when the green's clicked, we want the snake to be hidden. When we get to the end of the game, we want the snake to be hidden. But in this level, we want the snake to be visible, and we want it to be in this position. So let's set the position first. And I'm actually going to put a delay in here, so it doesn't appear immediately. And then I'm going to put in a show. So this time, if I start the game, drag the crocodile up to the bat, Okay, there's no snake, and a second later the snake drops in. If you think that's too fast, you can change that from a 1 to a 2. You can also make um, another costume appear in the meantime, like a poof or something, so it looks imaginary. Now, again, same problem here. The snake's just background at the moment. In fact, it's blocking the, uh, the cat from attaining the next uh, platform. So arguably, it's actually not helping at all. So we need to make a couple of changes now to the cat to allow the cat to go to the snake. So what we're going to say here is, again, it's a forever loop. And we only want it on level 2, so when level 2, background switch is level 2, we're going to have a forever loop. And what we want here is if scratch, again it's the touching one, so sensing is touching, but this time snake. Then what we want to do is we want to set, set a layer so we want uh, scratch to be in front of the snake so we can do that within the looks so what we're looking for here is go to the front layer so this time when scratch touches the snake he goes in front so we can see him and then what we want to do is we want him to glide upwards so we're going to go into the motion options and we're going to say we want him to glide to a specific position and where we want to glide him to is there so we're going to say glide to that position. And we can change that and make it slower. We could even put different glide positions on on the way so he kind of wobbles his way up and down. Now if I press start again and I pull my crocodile onto the bat, it should take us to level 2. After 2 seconds the snake appears. If I try to go up I can't, I just fall. But if I now go across to the snake 
it glides me up to here because it's green I can walk along this normally but if I fall off the edge I fall down now that's a bit of a mistake by me because what I've done is by putting the snake too close I fall onto the snake so let's move him across and let's change that position press the green button again pull the crocodile back onto the bat again the snake appears go across to the snake we're now onto this level, we can navigate this level, if we go off the edge, we fall all the way down, we can go back on the snake. I mean, you could actually make the snake disappear to make this harder, so that if um, you fall off, the snake's no longer there. You could also now add a new sprite that appears after a few seconds, or you could have it linked to a message that uh, Scratch says, like, press A for a new snake. And then when you touch Snake 2, that will send you to the next platform. The other thing this game is missing at the moment is it doesn't really have any end screen. So like the Game Over one that we made earlier, we want something that when the score reaches a certain point, it's Game Over successful, or well done, you've won the game, or even just a new sprite at the top of this platform that instead of taking you to level 3, takes you to a well done for completing the game kind of uh, level. And again, all you'd need to do with that is to make Scratch hide or make any of the other options hide. Now, to complete this level, what I need to do is I need to put a few more objects in here um, to block and possibly a few more to gain points. But at this point, I'm going to pause this and let you kind of develop it on your own a little bit. Okay, thank you for watching.